Today, I want to talk about how to grow your niche site with shoulder niches. What's a shoulder niche? It's an add-on niche relevant to your existing niche site. It's a way to build bigger niche site or blog without it looking odd. You're adding additional topics. Examples of shoulder niches would include if you have an existing baking site, adding on a cooking section, the cooking would be a shoulder niche. If you're in a dog's niche, adding cats would be shoulder niche. Piano, adding guitar section would be a shoulder niche. Examples of what are not shoulder niches is if you're doing a baking site, adding cycling is not a shoulder niche. It's not related at all whatsoever. You may even have visitors who are into baking and cycling, but that doesn't make it a shoulder niche. If you're in the dog's niche, adding a poker niche, not a shoulder niche. I've tacked on many shoulder niches over the years. In 2020, I added two more shoulder niches to my biggest niche site. They're working really, really well. Couldn't be happier with them. And at the end of 2020, I merged my smartwatch site, which was a standalone site all about smartwatches, into my fashion site to make them one large site. Why did I move the smartwatch site to a fashion site? Well, it, it's easier to build up authority for one site than two. There's a lot that goes into websites. You've got social media. You've got just publishing lots and lots of content, putting out custom illustrations and so forth. And I've just found that it's easier to just focus on fewer sites because I used to have quite a few niche sites I was trying to build up. And at the end of the day, there's only so much to reinvest every month back into content and it's easier to focus on fewer sites and put out more and better content on just fewer than on more. So that was a decision. Whether it's the right decision, I don't know. It could have been the wrong decision. I don't really think there is a right or wrong. There's compelling reasons to keep them separate. In this case, I felt that smartwatches, it's its an accessory. It's something you wear. If it's, it's not odd on a fashion site, so I moved it there. Interestingly enough, smartwatches are one of those crossover niches that could fit on a tech site as well. And, and a lot of the smartwatch content out there are, are actually is on um, on tech sites and not fashion sites. So we'll see how it goes for me. Now the lines between a topic cluster and niche can get blurred. One guideline to consider, and admittedly, this is, this is a pretty weak litmus test. If your audience would likely be, or even possibly be interested in the additional articles, there's a chance that the set of topics are in the same niche. Now, this is not always gonna be true, okay? This is just sort of a, a big picture guideline. And if it's not likely to be interested, then chances are it's a different niche. All right, but there really is no magic formula, unfortunately. It's really too simple, simplistic, the, what I had just said. Take dogs, for example, right? Dogs is a niche. It's a big niche. It's a popular niche. But let's say the German Shepherd breed specifically is also a niche. You could build out an entire website just on German Shepherd dogs. That would be no problem. It would have a tight audience. It would be a tight niche, potentially lots of traffic. But it's within the dog niche. Moreover, folks interested in German Shepherd dog content would not be interested in the Poodle articles. Yet, in my view, having both Poodles and German Shepherd breeds all on one site would, would not be a mistake. I think it would work, and I think it does work, and I think there are sites out there that do it, and they're successful. But at the end of the day, people into Poodles and who have a Poodle aren't interested in German Shepherd dog articles whatsoever. And so the, the, the tests that, you know, whether your audience would be interested in both or not, doesn't really fit, especially with a lot of niches. So you got to keep that in mind. It was, it's, it's sort of, it works with some websites and not others, but at the end of the day, you can make the argument. I mean, any, like even, even within a tight niche, not everybody's going to be interested in all the articles you publish within a specific topic. They may only be interested in one particular article at a time. So it really is a weak test, but it, it, it helps hopefully define potentially when you're going to move into cross the line and you're really outside into something that isn't a shoulder niche that has no relevance whatsoever. My approach is this, if it's reasonably related to the current niche, I go for it and I'll put it, I'll tack it on. It has to be re it falls within the bigger sector, is not going to be odd. So when, when should you add on a shoulder niche? Well, my approach is what I call spray and pray method, where basically I'll publish articles on a variety of topics when I start a new site, like a wide variety, all within the sort of the bigger 
level up category up niche. So if I were going to do the, the whole pets thing is an interesting niche, for example. Okay. Now I'm, I'm not interested in it. I, I'd, I'd be surprised if I ever went into it. I don't have pets. I don't plan on getting pets. Um, but I, there's good arguments to go at the pets level, which is enormous. I mean, the number of different pets out there, just tons and tons. And within, with each of those, there's lots and lots of content you could publish. But then for instance, the dog niche is also large and, and that would actually be, I would consider dogs alone sufficiently broad. So that's one of those massive, massive niches, but who knows how far I would, I would take it. So in my view, and it depends on the model you're going to want to do, but I like big, broad niche sites. So I will basically kick off a site covering a variety of niches and they, they may all be kind of shoulder niches in relation to one another. So I start pretty early because I want to get a sense of what's actually going to work fairly quickly. And if something works particularly well, better than something else, I will then focus on that particular area, grow it out, and then think about the, an additional shoulder niche at some point. But now I say this and you've got to keep it in context because my overall niche site strategy is to monetize primarily with display ads and to grow into massive, massive traffic. And to do that is going to require generally to publish a lot of content across a number of topics. Okay. Contrast that with a very focused niche site that's focused on generating affiliate commissions, maybe via with an email marketing newsletter. And it's very tight and the audience is very, very cohesive. It's a very effective strategy. I'm not saying that doesn't work. It's just not something I particularly do with my niche sites. I tend to go more broad. So you've got to keep everything I'm talking about with shoulder niches here with a grain of salt because it fits within a particular strategy that I do and that I like doing and that works. So how do you add on a shoulder niche? Well, it's pretty simple. I mean, you can just basically create a new taxonomy, whether it be at a category or a tag. There's no formula for either, really. I tend to try to restrict the number of categories I'm adding to a site, and they tend to be more broad and a little bit more vague. And then I drill it down into very particular uh, niches and topics using tags on a site. These are the, the categories and tags are two main taxonomies found in a WordPress uh, platform. So should you hire a new writer for a shoulder niche? Well, it's going to depend on the degree of expertise that you need. For for one shoulder niche I tacked on in 2020, I hired a dedicated writer for it. And that's all they do. They, they just write for that specific niche and they do a really good job. It took some time. I, I actually tried a number of writers before going ahead with her. And it's worked out really, really well. In other cases, I'll tack on a niche and it's fairly related to other content. I'll just use the existing cadre of writers that I have. Isn't it better just to launch a new site? Well, I address this. I believe for me and my experience, uh, one thing that's worked really well with my largest niche site that has continued to grow over the years, I've had down years, up years, the overall trajectory is up, 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 is that I'm really able to leverage the site authority that's built up. And the reason it has so much authority is it's got a lot of content, it has a lot of inbound links, it's got a lot of referring domains, and it just keeps growing that way. And so I can leverage all that authority to rank for more keywords faster, and I can rank for more competitive keywords. So it's sort of like this exponential benefit and advantage that grows over the years, and that's because it has a lot of authority. And I like to take advantage of that. So for me... I view if I can add on a new niche to an existing site, that for me is a better fit than starting a new site. But there are strong reasons for having multiple more narrow niche sites. One that I like, and that's very compelling to me, and that is the option to sell it at some point. So for instance, I can't really sell my smartwatch site anymore unless I want to sell the fashion site. But if I want to keep one or the other, then I'm stuck, right? So that is a decision I've made. And I hope it works out in the long run, but these are the considerations you need to think about. How many shoulder niches can you add to a site? Well, it really depends on the general niche that your site is about. If you're doing a pets site, there's dozens and dozens and dozens of shoulder niches you could add. If it's a personal finance site, that's t t typically more of a focused arena. Now, within personal finance, there's, there's budgeting and there's even arguably uh, investing, of course. And with investing, there's a lot of different niches and there's couponing and potentially even side hustles. So it can be quite expansive. 
or you can keep it very focused and focus it just on uh, you know budgeting and saving. Some people do that, but I would say generally speaking, personal finance would be a little bit more of a restrictive niche compared to uh, pets niche, which is absolutely massive. Probably a lot more keywords to go after in the pets niche. Personal finance is probably a lot more competitive and more difficult to break into. We get really analytical about this stuff, which I don't recommend. I tend not to. I know this this presentation is breaking it down into a lot of Q&A and definitions and all the rest of it, and even trying to formulate some sort of test and to figure out what, what is a shoulder niche and what's not. This is all getting very analytical, and I'm doing that just to explain the entire concept, but I avoid really thinking about it too much. I can almost decide within a few seconds whether it's a shoulder niche and it's going to fit or not. And you know what? I tend to th- just throw caution in the wind and just be like, if, if I think there's there's a fit, I'm going to put it out there and just see what happens. Because I mean, what's what's the worst that can happen? It's, it's not really going to hurt the site. The content may not work out so well, but in my view, it's worth doing. Now, obviously there are blatant differences. If I had the baking site, I'm not going to put cycling content on there. It's just, I mean, I just know within a second that just doesn't make any sense. But if it's if 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 it's close, I'll do it. Niches, topics, and articles are building blocks. I view most niche sites as this large foundation, which I'm continually adding building blocks, and and that would be the sub niches and even the the topics and the clusters and the articles. And I just keep building them up on top of one. Now, when I start off, as I said, I sort of do the spray and pray and just put out on. Uh, content on a, on a wide variety of different topics. So I go quite, quite wide, but then I'll go deep and then I'll start cherry picking the successful, uh, I guess, topics that I've, that I started on early and then start building out the ones that are outperforming the others. Then I'll go deep. And it's, those are the building blocks, building it up bigger, bigger, and bigger. And the shoulder niches continually do that as well. Is my way the only way? No, not at all. I've already talked about you could do much more focused niche sites that, that focus on protect, perhaps a particular product line, perhaps a very specific audience, and that can be very, very effective. In a lot of ways, it's 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 a better model, especially if you're doing affiliate promotions and you're building up an email newsletter. You want this strong, cohesive audience that all are looking for the same information or to solve the same problem. And in that case, the, that approach could be a lot better. My way is just one way of many in terms of how to go about publishing niche sites and content publishing generally. And I'll wrap it up with, you can get my free course, Six Figure Baseline Blogger at the blog, fatstacksblog.com. Check it out, it's free. Thanks for listening.